Hi. Hi. How are you feeling? I'm doing fine, thank you. Good. Um, so, are we... I'm pretty good. I'm pretty good. Um, it's very cold here today, which is why I'm wearing this cardigan. And um, but I don't mind the cold weather. It was kind of nice uh, to walk Ziggy this morning in the cold. Some fresh air. I like the change of seasons. So. How much is the cold weather now? How cold is it? Yes. It well now it's warmer, but it's probably much colder. It's probably colder than you've ever experienced, almost. It uh, right now it is fourteen degrees Celsius. So, but this morning it was. Um, let me figure it out. And, uh, Today in the morning it was 19. 19. Plus, really? Yes. Mm -hmm. Wow. Uh, oh, wait, let me switch this around. Uh, uh, that's, is that pretty cold for you? <laughs> it's not really that cold. Mm -hmm. That one, my mobile said that I can't, I can't believe it. Who said that? The mobile phone. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. The from of the news. If you open your phone, you find the temperature. Oh, 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 yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's what the phone said, but I can't believe it. Mm. Yeah, well, this morning it was about four or five degrees Celsius in, in Atlanta. It was cold. Five degrees. Five. So, nice and chilly. You need a jacket for that. Or a cardigan. Or both, which is what I wore this morning. Good evening, Shishtof. Hello, how are you? I'm pretty good. I was just explaining to Wafa how it's actually cold here today. It's the first cold day, I guess. And it is uh, it's 14 degrees Celsius now. But it's not that cold. <laughs> and it's sunny. It's a nice day, so no complaints. Uh, what about you? Uh, good morning. Uh... Well, it was raining, but uh, now is oh, now is <laughs> evening, so it's <laughs> almost night. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So I cannot say, but uh, it's um, we don't have a rain now. We don't have rain now. Um, we had a little bit of sun too. Mm -hmm. Sounds like good uh, remodeling weather. Yeah. <laughs> How's that floor coming? Uh, excuse me. I said, oh, I I did that in a more American uh, slang. I said, how's that floor coming? Flora. <laughs> uh, or, how's that floor coming? How's how's uh, how's your progress on your on your floor by IKEA? <laughs> <clears throat> no, it's pretty good. Almost finished. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Good. Uh, all right. And Marcello. Hello. How are you? I'm great. How are you? Fine too. Uh, what? How was your day today? Just, just uh, working. As usual. Uh huh. 
Um, could you please remind me again where you work because um, I think I've forgotten and you told me last week but I think that was the only time I ever saw you. <laughs> Plus we have some new students here today. Yeah, I mean new students here. I think uh, I'm here uh, for one week. And I, I, I am a manager. I sell shoes here. I have story. A manager for story in shop mall. I have a story. I have yeah. I have a shop store. here. Yeah, oh okay. And what, what what do you sell? Shoes, men's shoes. Oh okay. Maybe you didn't tell me that. Maybe you didn't tell me. I don't remember. So men's shoe store. Is it like formal formal shoes or every formal, kind? Of formal formal informal shoes like. Uh, Sapatenis, I don't know, in Portuguese we say, we say sapatenis is a mix of uh, shoes, uh, formal shoes with informal shoes. You know uh, what I mean? Okay, yeah, both, yeah, okay. And the uh, social shoes, socks, belts, mm -hmm, yeah. uh, briefcase, whatever. Ah, like leather products? Yeah, all leather, just leather we will. Oh, it's a leather, okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay, great. Welcome. And uh, Evgeny is here. Hi, Anthony. Hi, guys. Nice to see you. Hey. What's new with you? I uh, don't know. Nothing, nothing interesting. Mm. Well, tell me something boring. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> Completely boring. Uh, um... So we have a 400 level class today, and as you know, that's our hardest. This is our hardest class in Klingo, and we're talking about future perfect, which is maybe the hardest grammar skill we have. Here. So, um, so it'll be fun. And Susu has joined us. Hello. Hey, how are you today? I'm good. Good. And how was your day? What did you do today? Nothing. I went to work, thinking back. And it's weekend here. Uh, oh, yeah. That's right. Happy weekend. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Thanks. Cool. What are you going to do this weekend? Study for my exam. Ah, yes. On Saturday. Ah, that's no fun. What about tomorrow? Or today is tomorrow. What about Friday? I'll study for my exam. Both days, okay. <laughs> so it's a big, big exam. Wow. All right. Cool. So, yes, future perfect is our skill, uh, is our grammar skill today. And, and um, uh, we were talking about. Um, Christoph and I were talking about um, remodeling and stuff. He's remodeling his house. He's, he's making some changes, doing some projects. Uh, he's uh, putting in a new floor. And so as an example of uh, Future Perfect, um, maybe, Christoph, why don't you tell me when you will, when you will have finished the, uh, the project? You can use Future Perfect to explain when you will have finished. <laughs> mm, I will have finished my uh, floor before. Uh, how to say? <laughs> uh, All Saint Day. Oh. Yes. Um, All Saints Day. When's that? Uh, first, uh, uh, of November. Yes, yes, first November. First November. So, uh, okay, great. So that's almost perfect, it's future perfect. But instead of, what preposition should we use instead of before? I will have finished my project. You can say before, but there's a there's a better one. To or by? By would be better. 
So I will have finished the project by All Saints Day. It would be uh, perfect, future perfect. <laughs> yes, because you'll be done by a certain time. Mm -hmm. You will have finished it. Um, it's a little confusing. Uh, Evgeny, what about you? Do you have anything that you're working on that you might be, uh, you might have finished in the next few days? Mm, at this moment, I, I think I don't have something like this. Mm -hmm. No pro projects right now. No. Um, what about uh, your French lessons? Okay, let's say I. Uh, um, you can say you've completed five lessons or something like that. Yeah. Well, I'm going. May I say I'm going to have. I'm going to have finished. Mm-hmm. Yes. I'm going to yes, have finished, can. or I will. I will have finished. Um, translation project. Um, how should I create the second part in this case? Uh, well, uh, the preposition that you gave correctly would be the next, next construction, next part. Which preposition? Ah, so I only emphasize a specific date. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. By, by Monday at noon. Okay. Okay, great. So I will have uh, finished my translation project by Monday at noon. Yes. Yes. Good. And uh, what about you, Marcello? Yeah, I will. I will not have. Uh, I will. Uh, I will not have learned English <laughs> by uh, this year. <laughs> okay. Uh, by the end of the year, you could say. Yeah, by the end of the year. Learned. Yeah, I will not have learned English by the end of the year. Well, you'll learn a little. <laughs> you'll learn a lot. <laughs> you'll be better by the end of the year, I'm sure. <laughs> good, good, good use of negative uh, future perfect. And. Uh, Susu, when will you have uh, finished your exams? By Saturday, I will have finished my exam. Ah, cool. And she started with the preposition. That works. By Saturday, I will have finished my exam. See? I like that. Good construction. I have a question, Andre. Yeah. Uh, what if I say, I will have... Mm, I will have finished my project when... I something something. So I use another second part with uh, another tense. Yes, that is definitely possible. It would be it's more even more complex. But I will finish my project when uh, when uh, he finishes his project, <laughs> something like, that. or at yeah. the same time, or uh, I will finish my project. You can say I will have finished my project when it's done. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I will have finished my project. Yeah, you can use that. It's a it's a pretty complicated construction, but uh, sometimes you might you might need to use that. All the I will have finished um, remodeling my house when all of the uh, 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 I was gonna say all of the materials come. In the mail, I said, like you're ordering. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't know. So it's possible, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Chichu, can I oh, ask yeah. you? Yes, go ahead. It's not correct when you say, for instance, I will put a, an example here. Mm -hmm. For instance, I'm going to see a move when I will have finished my homework. It's not correct, or it's correct. Uh, I. Uh, uh, well, let's see, I I can I you can say it has to all be in the future. There, I will see a movie uh, when I will have finished. 
uh, yeah, it's possible, but it's much easier just to, to keep it simple, just to say, um, I'll watch a movie when I finish my homework. <laughs> Oh, or right. I am going to see the move when I have finished my homework. It's yeah, the, that's the, yeah. When I have finished, yeah, I will go see a movie. It's movie, by the way, movie. I will go see a movie uh, when I have finished. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. I will okay. see when I have finished my homework. Mm-hmm. And that would be. That would be. What tense is that then? It's not future perfect anymore, but it's it's correct. But what which tense would that be? Does anyone know? When I have finished my homework. Who can tell me what tense that is? I have finished. Present perfect. Yeah, that's present perfect. I have. I will go see a movie when I have finished my. Will be present. Perfect. When I will have finished my music, uh, my homework is uh, future perfect. Um, okay, good. And uh, Wafa, I want to forget you. Um, what's uh, something that you've that you might be working on that you can. Uh, Tell us when it will be done. Mm, I will make my kimchi. I will eat my kimchi when it's ready. (laughs) (laughs) ready. All right. So, uh, um, but can you do that? So that's 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 a good con- construction, but it's not future perfect. And future perfect is more complex than that. So when will you have finished making your kimchi? <laughs> what time? What day? When you will you have? Finished? By midnight. Midnight. Yeah. Okay. So you could say I will have I will have finished my kimchi by midnight, mm-hmm. and it's correct. And Susu wants you to send some some uh, kimchi, <laughs> and me too. <laughs> yes, I should try to make some kimchi. All right. Uh, okay. So. Um. And um, talking about this um. I want to just briefly go over the thought groups idea when you have um, when you're talking about future perfect. You, you say I, you know, it's you can't just say I will have finished my kimchi. Period. Um, you need another 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 phrase there to to complete the sentence to complete the idea. So um, I will have I will have Finish my. I will have finished my kimchi by midnight tonight. So, and and the uh, intonation kind of goes up, and the next thought group it starts at the same point. Um, I will have finished my kimchi by midnight tonight, and it goes back down at the end. So it kind of goes up, and then it picks up on the next place and goes back down. And that's how we pronounce that usually in English. So, um, any other questions before we delve further into uh, future perfect? I just use the word delve. I don't normally say that. Before we delve further into the grammar lesson, what does that mean, delve? You ever seen that? I don't normally use that word. But is it like saying into? Yeah, exactly. Like sinking into something. Let's let's dive into it. Let's just dive right into it and get our hands dirty and learn about grammar. Let's delve into it. All right. 
so. Um, okay, I'm going to share this with you. We'll uh, read it together. So let's start with Yevgeny. What about uh, future perfect? Uh, first, we use the future perfect to express that something will occur before another action or that something will happen by a particular time in the future. It has two forms, will have and to be verb going to have. You can use both with little or no difference in meaning. Will construction, will not plus have plus past participle. Will you have finished the laundry by the time I get home from work? Yes, I will have finished it by then. No, I won't have finished it until 9 p.m. Sorry, I'm muted. Uh, and the going to construction? Going to construction uh, is am, are, to be verb, not, plus going to have, plus past participle. Are you going to have cooked dinner by the time the neighbors arrive? Yes, I'm going to have cooked a delicious casserole. No, I'm not going to have cooked it by then. Great. OK. Uh, will have, won't have, going to have, not going to have. Second, Krzysztof. Oh, Second, okay. we often use the future perfect with by or in. By means no later than particular time, and in means within a period of time. Do you think you will have finished your essay by next Friday? I have finished my class in a few hours. Then you can use the computer. Mm -hmm. I'll have I'll have finished my class. Yep. Make sure we get that. Make sure you get the L in there. Otherwise, it's going to have a different different tense sound, or it won't even make sense. <laughs> I have finished. Really, two different tenses. Yes. Yes. Okay, Marcello. Yeah. Uh, would you read the third one here? Third, yeah. Mm -hmm. Third, future tenses cannot be used within times clauses, including the future perfect. If you are using a time expression beginning with the when, while, before, after, by the time, as soon as, if you are unless, you have two options. Use the number four. One, use the simple presence in the timing clause. As soon as I will finish the course, I will have earned my bachelor's degree. Incorrect. As soon as I finish this course, I will have earned my, my, my bachelor's degree. Correct. Mm -hmm. Number two, uh, switch from the future perfect to the present perfect. I'm going to watch TV when I will have finished my homework. Incorrect. I'm going to watch TV when I have finished my homework. Correct. Okay. Good. Um, so there's the when that we were talking about. Right. Um, ah, Susu left us. She doesn't like future perfect. Well, that means... Wafa can read. Oh, just in time, Wafa. <laughs> Susu's here. <laughs> Susu, you came here just in time for your turn to read. Okay. <laughs> uh, fourth, we use the future perfect continuous to show that something will continue up until a particular event or time in the future. We use durations with for and since with this form, such as for 10 minutes, for 3 months, and since Tuesday. OK. Good. And? OK. Well construction, well not have been, plus fair, plus ing. How long will you have been waiting for the bus by the time I get there? I will have been waiting for two hours by the time you get here. I won't have been waiting for too long. For too long. 
going to construction. Is um, our, to be verb, not plus going to have been plus verb and ing. Are we going to have been sitting at the bus stop for longer than 10 minutes when the bus arrives? Yes, I'm going to have been sitting here for at least an hour by the time it arrives. No, I'm not going to have been sitting here for more than five minutes. Okay. Excellent. Now we'll fucking read. <laughs> um, the future perfect continuous is useful for showing cause uh, and effects in the future. Mary will be sleepy when she gets home because she will have been walking for 12 hours. Effects sleep, sleepiness cause walk, walking. Mm -hmm. Summers will be able to speak fluent Mandarin by the time he gets back to America because he is going to going to have been studying language 10 hours a week effect fluency cause study great so Wafa will be able to speak fluent English by the time uh, she's done with these classes all right uh, and sixth Evgeny Oh, <clears throat> six, the future continuous is often mixed up with the future perfect continuous. There's a difference, though. The future perfect continuous emphasizes interrupted actions, whereas the future perfect continuous emphasizes the duration of time before something is in future. Color will be exhausted because she will be exercising so intensely. Future continuous, it emphasizes that color will be exhausted because she will be exercising at that exact moment in the future. Kala will be exhausted because she will, be, she will have been exercising so intensely. Future perfect continuous, it emphasizes that Kala will be exhausted because she will have been exercising for a period of time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think it's kind of funny that the definition, uh, the explanation here of the future perfect is written in future perfect. So. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but I think you get the, the idea. It's like something uh, she will be, uh, she will have been in the process of doing something, continuing with something. Okay. And finally, seventh, Krzysztof. Seventh, we can use the future perfect in the passive form by adding been. For the future perfect simple or being for the future perfect continuous. Note the continuous form is rarely used in the passive voice and sounds awkward. The Toronto maple leaves will have defeated the over team by the third period active. The over team will have been defeated by the Toronto Maple Leafs by the third period. Pass. Mm -hmm. J.K. J. K. Rowling will have uh, been writing that novel for over two years by the time it's finished, active. The novel will have been being written by J.K. Rowling for over two years by the time it's finished. Passive, uncommon. Yeah, don't don't write a sentence like that. That's that's just weird. The novel will have been <laughs> that doesn't make any sense. I would just forget. Will have it been being written? It's strange. That's too strange. Just forget about that one. Um, I wouldn't even understand what that means. <laughs> will have been being written. <laughs> no, will have. J.K. Rowling will have been writing the novel for a lot more. 
Oh. Okay, so that's a whole bunch of stuff about Future Perfect. Any questions about that? But uh, we kind of did an, a pre-assessment already, and you guys did pretty good. So. So, uh, um, if there are no other questions, we can continue on to our travel class. And we're going to go to five charming South American towns. This is from The Guardian. I always tend to pick uh, newspapers that are uh, advanced English. The Guardian writes pretty advanced. Is it Boston newspaper? Nope. Uh, the Guardian, I believe, is uh, like London or something. Um, but oh, I'm not sure. I think it's British. Yeah. I think it might be Manchester. Manchester. So, um, yes, it's a famous newspaper, Manchester. I had it wrong. Okay. But it's a great paper. I really like it. I read articles from this sometimes. Colonial Charm 5 Characterful. That's a strange word. <laughs> I don't use this word. I think this must be British. Characterful South American towns. That's just, uh, how about five South American towns with lots of character? <laughs> South America is dotted with villages and towns full of colonial architecture and even remains of a much more ancient history. Here are five favorites. Uh, hold on. Maybe. I'll send you the link, too, in case you want to read it on your computer. Okay. So, this is Colonia del Sacramento in Uruguay. Okay, so first one we have uh, Anay in Guyana. Anay is a small village at the base of Guyana's uh, Pacaraima Mountains, great for spotting wildlife such as tapirs and poison dart frogs. What are tapirs and poison dart frogs? I really don't know what those are. <laughs> Wait, I want to see what a tapir is. I gotta figure this out. What on earth? Wow! That is awesome! So, that is a strange, strange animal. So, <laughs> the local people believe to be descended from Mongolians? What? are known for their cotton spinning and traditional dancing. Mongolians, that's so confusing. Um, okay, anyway, so there's one. Um, El Atillo, Venezuela. El Atillo is becoming engulfed by Caracas, but maintains its 16th century charm. Multicolored houses uh, line hilly streets and the town is full of arts and crafts shops and noted for its music scene, hosting two festivals a year. And they give us some recommendations. Olón, Ecuador. Olón is a charming fishing village, all bobbing goats and fish restaurants. It is surrounded by mangrove swamps, a home to the endangered blue crab and white sand beaches. Olón is just up the coast from the surf town of Montañita, accessible by bus or taxi from Gu uh, Guayaquil. Uh, Guayaquil. So, um, what? Mangrove. Do you know what a mangrove? Yeah. It's kind of um, wood. Um, Growing in uh, seashell. All right. Let's look at pictures. Mangroves. So make sure we... Yeah. Yeah. Yes, these things. Mangroves. Strange. Mangroves. 
Interesting. Good. You don't have mangroves in Poland, do you? No. <laughs> I didn't think so. They're usually in tropical weather, I thought. Okay. Um, wait a minute. Oh, yeah, here's Colonia del Sacramento in Uruguay. Colonia across the Rio Plata from Buenos Aires was founded by the Portuguese and has a feel of Lisbon about it. Uh, with cobbled streets around a UNESCO World Heritage, this should be capitalized. UNESCO should be all capitalized. Uh, World Heritage lice, uh, listed center returns from Buenos Aires on high-speed ferries cost from twenty dollars. Oh, good price. Um, Lisbon, where's Lisbon? Geography question. Uh, in Spain. Close. I'll give you a hint. Uh, yeah. Founded by the Portuguese. Portugal. <laughs> yes, good. Very close. So Lisbon, I think it's the capital, right? Okay, and uh, Yanke, Peru. Yanke is in Peru's uh, Colca Valley is a mix of cultures, colonial Spanish and indigenous pre-Incan. Visitors can hike up to Uyo Uyo, a well-preserved pre-Incan, wow, pre-Incan archaeological site up the mountain. Then relax in the public hot springs while gazing across a landscape dotted with llamas. Yanke is on the bus route from Arequipa to Chivay. Uh, Peru is a great country. So I want to see what these... Let's look at pictures of all of them, because I like learning about different cities, and let's see what they look like. Ah, cool. Okay. I've never even heard of this city. <laughs> awesome. And that's in Colca Canyon. All right. Let's look at Colonia del Sacramento. Uh, I got images. I like images. Wow. Pretty. What is that? Weird. Must be hilly there. Yeah, I love this kind of colonial style. Look at this, these old streets. Neat. And one more picture I saw that was interesting to me. That's an interesting looking building. What about Olon? Hmm. Wow. Cool. Let's see here. Hmm. Looks like a beach town, I guess. Very nice. A lot of surfing, I see. So yeah, it's a fishing village. And it's close to the surf town of Montanita. Uh, Latino. Let's look at this town. I'm surprised they don't have pictures in the in the uh, article. We have to look ourselves. Ooh, you guys ever had these before? What's going to be too big? Does anyone know what this is? My class always turns it into a food class. <laughs> Anyone recognize Something you with chocolate? <laughs> yeah, it's definitely a dessert. Yes, yes, absolutely. These are churros. Churros. Oh, look, you can see it in the file then. Churros. And churros are delicious. It's, um, I don't know how to describe it, but it's like, oh, see, now you can see all these churros. It's like a fried 
they're very light. They're very lightweight, and they're like deep fried, I think. And uh, they usually have a cinnamon flavor, but this one seems to have chocolate on it. But it usually has sugar and cinnamon on it, and they're delicious. Wow. That's cool. Look at that picture. Shanty Towns? Yeah, Shanty Towns. Yeah. Very colorful. I like it. I like the colors. Wow, Elatio was founded in 1700. All right. More of the shanty town. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Interesting. I think. Okay, and then Anai. And then we will be done. Okay. I see a lot of grass huts. <laughs> I don't see it. What is this guy? What's he doing? All right. Hmm. This just looks like a field with some huts. <laughs> I don't see any city here. It's crazy. Well. Doesn't really pull up any results, does it? <laughs> I don't see very much here. But um, it is a small village. Interesting. So yeah, it's just wildlife and stuff. So like, not a whole lot going on there. Uh, okay. So um, we lost. Um, we lost Marcello. So, has anyone here been to South America? No. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I guess not. I guess not. Hmm. Um. So, if there's five, they have five uh, interesting cities, and these are these, this article. It gives list cities that are not the most popular places. These are not the most touristy places. It's kind of like, you remember that class I taught a couple weeks ago about, a weeks ago about the new Europe, going to the new London mm -hmm. and the new... It's kind of like yeah. this, where it's like, yeah, don't go to Lima, Peru, don't go to uh, Buenos Aires, don't go to Caracas, go to these other places that are more interesting, more charming. What does that mean? They use charming, that's a very important word because it's in the, the title of the article. How can, what's another way to Charming, how do, what does that mean, charming? I'm talking about a town. How can a town be charming? It's not hard to... Magic. Okay. Yeah, magical. Oh, I like that. I like that. What else? Attractive. Attractive. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Good. A town. A town can be charming. What are some other words we could use? We talk about a charming town. Magic, attractive. Appealing. Appealing, yes, definitely appealing. So, and uh, it's all it's often used to describe people too. Somebody's it's a charming man or a charming lady. Yeah, but in the town can be charming, definitely. Towns and cities uh, often have um, have a personality. The city can have a personality, right? Yeah. So pleasant would be a nice one. Delightful, charming, cute maybe. Sometimes. Uh, lovely. So, cozy. Cozy maybe. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So uh, and yeah, it's uh, the opposite would be like you know a boring town. It's like ugly and uninteresting and nothing to do. People aren't friendly, you know. <laughs> the charming usually have friendly people, nice cafes and restaurants and whatever. Beautiful streets, beautiful architecture, charming town. So, which of these? They give us five towns here. You, um, was there one that looked more charming to you, more appealing to you? <laughs> Evgeny. Oh. 
Sorry, I was muted. Mm. And you can click on it if you forgot the names. <laughs> I don't remember all of them either. They're all in different countries. Or anyone have a have one that looks particularly interesting? The one in Ecuador, Olon. Mm hmm Okay. Olon. Yeah. Um uh, so you like uh, the seashore then? Yeah. Aha, uh -huh. so you're going to go to the beach. Let me try it. Have you, you ever done, have you ever surfed before? No. <laughs> Would you try surfing if you went to Olon? Maybe. Maybe? Yeah, yeah. We clicked on the picture, we, we typed in Olon and we saw lots of people surfing. We saw lots of pictures of beaches. So and they said it's famous for what? What kind of food do you, do you think? <laughs> Is it uh, boats and what kind of restaurants? Fish. Yes, fish restaurants. <laughs> near the beach, you gotta eat fish when you're near the beach. Yeah. Yes. Cool. I've never been to Ecuador. Um, what else? What are your favorites? Your stuff. Which one would you go to? Mm, I, I would choose Ecuador too. Oh really? I think. Uh, I think from these mm -hmm. uh, cities, uh, it's the best. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it looks laid back, relaxing. I like that. That's a really good uh, adjective. Laid back. That's a great, great word. You guys all seen that word before? Laid back. Mm -hmm. So yeah, laid back. You can be a laid back person, or you can have a laid back lifestyle. Or you can have a laid back vacation. So laid back. And uh, I have a question. Yeah. Is your Palingo chat's working. Yeah, I've been typing stuff in there. Do you guys not see what I'm typing? I don't know what's I going see. on, but... <laughs> you see it, Christian? Yeah. You okay, wrote a laid back. Yeah, I wrote laid back. I, have a, I didn't write very much. You didn't miss much. <laughs> I haven't been writing. Um, mine isn't working. I don't oh. know what to do. <laughs> but it's, don't worry. You're not missing anything. Uh, I hardly any. I've barely written anything. I don't usually use the chat very much. I more often use the screen. If it's something important, I, I put it yeah. on the screen so everyone can see. So, not important, but laid back is just how it sounds. L A I D B A C K. Laid back. Two words. Um, and Wafa, where would you want to go? Which charming colonial town? The town that um, there is like a rocky street. Mhm. Mm with the uh, one with lots of history. There's rock, rock street. Oh, the yeah, 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 with the rock street. Yeah. Um. Which one was that? Is that? Yeah, cobbled streets. The one in Uruguay, probably Colonia del Sacramento. One, the one that's on the the front page of the article too. That beautiful picture. Uh, that's the main picture but for. If, but if it had hot weather, I can't go there. If it has hot weather, you would not go there. Yeah. Oh well, go in the winter time maybe. <laughs> so this is the main picture of this article, and this is this is that city. It's very charming, looking very beautiful.
Mm-hmm. Um, so, um, what uh, they, they they keep using the word colonial to colonial uh, South American towns and Spanish colonial. What does that mean? Oh, we lost Christoph. So, any ideas about colonial? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, well, I'll give you a hint. Wow, everyone's leaving my class. They must think I have a very boring class. So, the uh, the root word of colonial is colony. Mm-hmm. So it just means, you know, uh, uh, having to do with a colony. So these towns were um, colonized. These countries were all colonized by Spain. And the, Span the Spaniards came in and they built these towns to look kind of like Spanish style, European style. So it has these kind of European feel in South America, these cobblestone streets and these buildings and stuff that's influenced by Spain. So, French, uh, so you could say Spanish colonial. Uh, British colonial, French colonial, you know, just about a colon, you know, colonizing another place. So it harkens back to another. Everyone left. Just no, we're here. Good, because I, I need to, I need to give assessments to somebody. Uh, what were you gonna say? Yeah. There's, there's the French word that sounds like this word, but I don't remember. Hmm. Uh, like Cologne? I heard like colonial or something. Mm -hmm. Well, there's a French word that's an English word, and it's uh, Cologne, which is uh, what men, men wear on their... Men uh, wear fragrance on their on their face like cologne. That sounds like uh, that sounds like cologne. But you're thinking of something different. Yeah, the French word. I don't know. I don't remember. Hmm. I've heard heard it a lot. That's it. Hmm. Well. It's possible that we have the same word in English. We have a lot of French words. We borrow a lot of French words in English. So, uh, and the word for colonial in French is probably about the same. Uh, French and English aren't that different. Uh, what is the word for colonial? Yeah, it's exactly the same word. <laughs> uh, the word for colonial in French is colonial. It's the same word. Oh, let's see. Colonial. Right. <laughs> same word. Colonial. Colonial. Same spelling, even. So that's how close French and English can be sometimes. Um, but you're probably thinking of a different word. Uh-oh, we're out of time almost. Well, we already did assessments in the beginning of class. But let's let's try again. Um, future perfect will have um, uh, tell me something you will have done in three hours Wafa. by uh, three hours from now tell me something that you will have done um, I will have attend classes mm -hmm. okay uh, that's probably true. You will have attended classes, some more classes here. And, uh, and Evgeny, tell me something. Uh, I will have... I will have played... Uh, 
uh, I will have played in, in bridge. You uh, played, played bridge. You can just say played bridge. You don't need to. Play, uh, mm -hmm. I, I will have played bridge. Um, Hmm. How to say in three hours? Oh, um, you can no. say I will play uh, in th uh, in three hours from now. Uh, three hours from now, I will have played bridge. That means you'll be done in three hours. Okay. Yeah. So, or you can say, yeah, you can, yeah. Mm -hmm. So you'll be done playing bridge in three hours from now. Is what that means. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yep. You can say that. So you're a bridge player too, huh? <laughs> Not exactly, just an example. Oh, okay, because I know we have a Polish guy, Wiesław, he plays the bridge. And no, I don't no. know many people that play. <laughs> All right, uh, I'm out of time, but thanks so much for coming to my class. And um, My next class is a food class, I believe. And yeah. we'll be talking about the kolacz, the kolacz. Kolacz. Yes. Kolach, I don't know how to say it. I've heard two different ways to say it, but we'll we'll talk about it soon. So thank you and uh, thank see you for the class. Bye bye. Mm -hmm. Good job. Thank you.